What's up beautiful people? It's your boy Mizko here and today I'm going to share with you 10 tips and hacks to really streamline your Figma workflow. So good that you're probably going to be thinking, whoa, this is just too good Mizko. Alright guys, let's get right into it. So, here is the first one and by the way, I am going to supercharge and power through this. So, hopefully you can keep up. Can you keep up? Lego. So, here we have five avatar guys. So, what happens if you wanted to overlap these avatars and do it in a systematic way? Well, you could manually do it like you see what I'm doing right now, but there is a better way guys. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap all these images in a frame, right? So, they're all inside a frame now. Then, what I'm going to do is hit Shift A, turn it into an auto layout, all right? And then, I'm going to go ahead and change the, direct, uh, the spacing to negative 10. But it doesn't actually work because you can you can only have it at zero. So what does it mean? Well, what we can do then is actually go ahead and grab the frame, right? And reduce by holding down command on your keyboard and then reducing, reducing the frame size to around 45. Do it to the second one and then you can grab the actual third one and you can see that it is automatically reducing the space in between. Now, this is systematic because then ultimately if you ever wanted to and you want to space them out, you can do that really easily as you can see like this, okay? So, really quick way to uh, create overlapping avatars with auto layout. Now, the second one, guys, Let's say you've created this beautiful sidebar, guys, so beautiful, right? And you wanted to go in and actually do some systematic updating to all the labels inside. So you don't want to go in and manually have to go through each one and do it manually. What you can do is you can go ahead and double click onto the actual group of uh, items that you want to like nest it, nest down into. So you can see that links are selected. Hit that return key once, hit it twice, three times, four times right five times and you have nested down five times without having to tinker around with your little layers and stuff and then you can go ahead into your auto layout and you can increase the space reduce the space and you can see how quick that is especially if you have lots of components and you need to start nesting down into things keyboard shortcut by pressing enter 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 is a great way to streamline that process all right so i'm gonna go ahead and close that the third one, I believe this is the third one. Yes, it's the third one. So let's say you created this beautiful sidebar, right? And you want to um, put flush it to the left hand side and you wanted to make sure you drag it down, but everything feels very compact and dense at the top and you want to create a bit of breathing room, right? You want the last two links to be sitting at the bottom, always sitting at the bottom. So what you can do is you have to go ahead and grab your sidebar, make sure it's in an auto layout. Then you have to go in and change it from packed to space between, but we're not done yet. If you take a look at the items inside the space bar, or the space bar, the sidebar, and if we've got sp space between, if I drag this out, it's gonna create space between all the elements, all the group of elements, sorry. And that is not what we want, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and grab everything that we want to be grouped together, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the links, the profile, and the logo, so they're all grouped together. You can group it inside a group or a frame, it doesn't really matter, but let's just put it inside a group for now. You can group the last two links, they're already done, and you can also delete that divider, and you can just go ahead and drag that down, right? Perfect, beautiful, right? If you like these tips and tricks, make sure to gently smash that button, like button, guys, because I will highly appreciate that. Now, there is, now the fourth one is to create a component set. This is a new feature update from Figma themselves. Now, before, if you want to turn all these buttons into a component and then merge them and combine them into variants, well, you had to go ahead and select them all, click the drop down, create multiple components, and then hit combine as variants, right? So lots of clicking, not what we want to do if we want to be streamlined Figma designers, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and command Z out. What we can do is highlight them all, click on that little drop down and hit create component set, and voila, you've done that in two clicks, and then you obviously will have to tinker around with your variants and manage it over on the right hand side, right? Next. Now, let's say you have a massive design system, guys. So, here's a little uh, sneak peek and preview of Designership Design System 2.0. We have like a stellar, phenomenal, phenomenal, astronomical sized design system. There is so many components as you can see over here. But let's say you are working on a project 
and you are making an update and then it's publishing, right? It's taking forever to publish. Well, what you can do is, I'm gonna go ahead and just open up my browser and you can see that you can open up the same Figma file, right, that you're working on. So if I went ahead and clicked on asset, went into my library and made a massive pub and published it and it's taking like literally hours or even like 30 minutes, Sometimes what I've noticed is if you flick through to another tab, it fails. So what I like to do is, if this is taking forever to load, I will open up the Figma browser um, app and then I will just continue designing inside the browser while this is still running. That is a quick hack if you have slow loading times. So back to the Figma uh, tips and tricks, guys. Here's another one. Lots of designers asking, how do we create that responsive grid layout with a sidebar, right? So it's not revolutionary, guys. It's not brain surgery either. So let's say we've got a, a sidebar on the left-hand side inside this canvas. Well, obviously you can't go, you can't go and just add a, um, a grid layer on top of this because it's just going to overlap the sidebar. So how do we do it? Well, we can reverse engineer that and let's go ahead, make sure the canvas is selected, hit F on our keyboard, and then you draw a frame, right, where the content will sit, right? Right there, smack bang. Then you wanna go ahead and add a uh, column, a grid layout, sorry, on inside that. So you can see if you go and select your frame with the actual columns, change it, the constraints to left and right. And if I move this out down here with a little bit more room, you can see it will always be responsive. So that is a responsive grid layout for a layout with a sidebar. And then if you guys did not notice this, this is a very simple one, but you can drag and drop GIFs into your actual designs. And I find myself doing this frequently whenever there are animations required. So for a loader, if you want to emulate a real experience or like sort of a realistic experience inside your prototype, well, you can use loaders and you can see that it will actually create that effect. So if you are creating an interaction for clicking a button and there's a loading state and then it shows the screen and you want to emulate that in your prototype, well, you can create a actual um, static page with the loader inside, voila, you have created a beautiful interactive uh, prototype. Now, the next one, fixed table columns. So I don't know if you guys have ever created a responsive table. I have actually taught you guys how to do this in a previous video. Feel free to search it in my actual feed. But let's say you wanted to fix some of the columns so they don't collapse onto three lines. Well, you can obviously, very simple, um, but a lot of people were actually asking this question. You can change fill container to fix width and then you, if you drag this out, you can see that it will fix itself and it won't collapse. So very quick tip for you if you wanted to create fixed columns inside your tables, right? Next one. This one is a little bit of a tricky one, but if you appreciate this one, make sure to smash that like button, guys. So here we have two tool tips that have been designed incorrectly, okay? So let me walk you through why it's been designed incorrectly. First tool tip. So what I've done is probably the most obvious thing that you can do if you were designing a tool tip is to create the tip, right? Like this, and then you merge it with a rectangle. So you can see that the base has been merged with union selection. And then I've got the, te the text on top of the rectangle. But if I go ahead and type more text, it doesn't grow because these two are separate entities or separate elements um, inside this frame. So what did I do in the second one? Well, the second one, I've used the auto layout, right? To build out this, this base. So if I go and type more text, it's obviously going to expand um, with the text. So that's perfect. But if you notice that the actual tip doesn't scale with it because it doesn't actually know where that where the um, content is ends, right? Figma doesn't know where this content ends in relation to the tooltip. So what we have to do is, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down and actually pop this over here. And what the first thing we need to do is, we need to wrap the entire tooltip inside an auto layout, right? Because this will allow us to, this will allow Figma and these elements right inside to know where the end of the actual um, tooltip ends. Then I wanna go ahead and wrap this tip inside an, an auto layout as well and name it tip. Why? Because I want to be able to set the resizing to fill container. You can see that bounding box filled the container. 
Then I want to go ahead and change the, the, the margin to zero, the padding to zero. You can see if I then change the spacing, oh, sorry, the alignment of this component to center, you can see that this element now is filling the container and it's also always centering that tooltip. So if I decide to continue typing, because this element is filling the container, it's always going to know where it ends. So that is a scalable tooltip, but it doesn't end there, guys. So what happens if I want to align this tip to the left-hand side? Because sometimes the tooltip ends on the left-hand side, but it doesn't actually connect properly. This tooltip needs to be indented a little bit like this. Well, I can't actually do it. It needs to be indented by maybe like 10 pixels so it can actually connect to the base of this uh, tooltip. So what we need to do is we need to go into the actual tip. We need to uh, click on L on our keyboard and we need to go ahead and draw a line. Whoops, it didn't go inside, but I'll drag that back into the tip. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just line this up right underneath, right? As you can see right there. And what I wanna do is I wanna click on the line. I wanna hit Command Option G on my uh, keyboard to tur turn that into a frame or wrap it in a frame. Then I wanna drag that tool tip um, inside that frame, right? You can see it's happening right there. And then I'm gonna move it across a little bit, all right? And I can actually use this alignment tool to align it in the center. So you can actually see now, this tooltip is actually sitting exactly where I want it. So if I continue typing, it sits perfectly, right? And then if I want to actually align it to the right-hand side, I can, right? There we go. You can see that it doesn't touch the end because of the line itself. So if I zoom all the way in, you can see that the line is giving it that space on the right, the left and right hand side. So what I can do is turn off the stroke and voila, you have a perfect and scalable tooltip um, in seconds, right? All right, so the final one is a Figma plugin recommendation. It is so good that I just had to include it in here. So I can't actually show you in this specific file, but if I pop over to the DesignShip 2.0 Figma file, and you can see that we have so many styles here. And in a previous video, I told you guys, if you want to update all the styles, you'd have to manually go through one at a time. Now, honestly, that was so time consuming, but a new Figma plugin came out and, uh, and you can automate this process. So the plugin is called Batch Styler. So if you click on Batch Styler and download it, you can see that it will pick up all the styles, text styles that you've actually created inside this file that have been published, right, or created. So if I wanted to and change all the fonts for the displays, you can see that it nests everything down here. So displays, showing me all the displays, and if I go ahead and select them all, then I can actually go ahead and change this font to Clash Display, for example. And you can see that there's an error because it can't seem to find semi-bold um, in the Clash uh, dis Display font styles. So what I have to do is actually select it manually. And the reason why it can't pick it up is because there is no space in between um, the semi-bold. So if I do, do that and change extra bold and extra bold doesn't exist. So if I just change it to bold and hit save and then hit update styles, you can see it will automatically update all those textiles. If you appreciate that, make sure to gently smash that like button because that is an absolute godsend, guys. I will see you in the next video very soon. What the? What the?